Welcome back, Zero Cave. Oh, I know that's a different engine, isn't it? Shit. Welcome back, Zero Cave fans, to Nanal Is It Done, our main your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever one you prefer. And we're on a map between Orpheus and Wesley Boss on Ravage, which is surprisingly complicated to get into. I don't know why, but yeah, I think there's an issue with this engine version that some of these games are played on, where I literally cannot all tab to things behind here. Ay. <sighs> Whatever, it's no longer the problem. Anyway, let's begin. Orphelius going for the Amphibot Factory, while Wesley going for the Shieldbot Factory. A matchup we've actually seen a fair bit recently, although I'm not sure when this match was played and I cannot check. Because Web Browser is being blocked by the game. But, actually, is it baked in here? No, it isn't. Huh, okay. Well, at any rate, this is a match between these two players, which is... Older. And as also, like I said, Amphot versus Shield, which is a matchup we've seen quite a bit of recently, and it is going to be Archer based, because archers are the new duck. Archer is the new go-to unit for Amphbot. We used to see a lot of ducks, and then Archers got buffed, basically. Ducks are still as good as they always were, but they always had some weaknesses when it came to dealing with skirmishers and riots, and they were just kind of iffy because they were skirmishers of their own to an extent, but they weren't really pure raiders. They had some hard times dealing with other bots because they're high alpha. Archers, on the other hand, are low alpha units. They can deal with other bots, no problem. Also, they push. A lot. Like, and on a map like this, it's going to be pretty brutal because they're going to be pushing everyone off cliffs into the water or into other cliffs. Or It's going to be... It's going to be hard. It's going to be bad. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be bad for the, any unit that gets caught by an archer, though. So... Eh, take that what you will, but it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a thing. At this point, though, Wesley is expanding quite aggressively, as is Orphelius. Both players, they're playing pretty much evenly. They both want their economy, they both are moving forward to get it. And they're both making sure that they each have a strong position to work from. But at this point, Orphelius having something of an advantage because of their unit choice. They have archers, I don't see any rogues to try to deal with this. Which would be why well, I don't think of the obvious choice. Or th oh, thug, thug laws. I'm not sure how that'll work. I'm honestly not sure how thug law will work, because I don't know offhand whether you can push someone with shields. Like a unit with shields, I think gets pushed all the same. In which case, thug law doesn't strike me as being a particularly good I idea. But we'll find out in a sec, because this convict is going to be hit by the archer, and it is going to be hit by the archer, right? Come on, Orphelius. Come on, Pastor Orphelius. Prove me right or wrong regarding the convict. No! No, shields actually do a really good job stopping the water. Okay, so Thug Law is a great idea. Wesley Boss knows exactly what they're doing in the Thug Law Ball. I mean, you know, un until the shield goes down. But while the shield is still available, Thug Laws can just power through anything. So this is perfect. This is exactly what Wesley Boss wants. And that is going to work. So yeah, as long as the shields are up, the push will not happen. Which is... I guess it kind of makes sense, because it's essentially absorbing energy. Like, shields as a rule be absorbing energy and kind of dissipating across the entire shield. So absorbing kinetic energy makes about as much sense from the water spray as it does from a bullet. Anyway. I mean, that's... That's the fluff. That That is the fluff I'm making up right now for why this works. However, what's also working is Wesley Boss's economy, as they're expanding a little bit faster than Orphelius and managing to find that little bit more metal. Also a bit more overdrive, mostly from all the wind generators in their base, which Orphelius has as well, but the last one is not connected, so the overdrive isn't quite as efficient. What I was talking about last game, in much smaller scale. This is... This isn't quite the you-would-have-twice-the-economy-if-you-overdrive situation, but it does mean that Wesley Boss does have about 5 metal per second advantage. Also is accessing like mad, hence the caretaker. Where Phileas, on the other hand, had the caretaker up in time, so it's going to be a bit of an advantage for them in terms of unit value for a little while. Or at least metal use. Yeah, Orphelius is 600 metal ahead metal use. And about the same for unit advantage. On the other hand, though, Thug Law. But boy, that is going to be a counter to that. Oh, that is going to be quite the counter, because boys, they're slow damage. That damages shields a lot. So we're going to see those shields go down almost immediately. After which point, the archers will have a field day. But given the current positioning, this is actually still going to work out. Wesley Boss is still going to be in a ish, okay-ish position. Not, not a great position, just 
Okay-ish. Yeah, the behavior of water and shields is still kind of awkward. No, never mind. No, the shields went down. Or down enough. Yeah, that... Wow, that just became a ramp. This, this cliff here. I mean, it's not quite a cliff because of the way height maps tend to work. It's actually it, the slight slope. So, yeah, in that case, why not go for rogues? I mean, really, why not go just pure rogue? Because at that point, you at least can deal with all this stuff. Archers don't have enough range to work with that. They only have, what, 300 range? Yeah, 300 range. I'm not gonna be doing things like pushing your thugs up a cliff and then pushing them off the cliff and then into the water where they can't do anything anymore unless someone comes in and terraforms them to save them. And just terraforms up a platform from where they are so they can get this basically elevator back on. And the same with Orphelius, just massing up their overdrive again. Why are they doing this? I mean, I hope they build pylons. I really do. Although I'm not sure it's going to matter because the back line coming here from, from Wesley Boss with all these bandits, they're not even worried about the archers. They're just going around the back. They're destroying what they can. Not sure where they're focusing on the power infrastructure. Metal is going to be far more effective, but hey, at least it slows down some of the power generation. Still, like, get the metal. Orphelius is fine for power. I mean, Wesley has no way of knowing this, but Orphelius is fine for power. That is not a problem. In the slightest. So at this point, Wesley Boss, there's the rogue. There we go. Now we've got it. So Wesley has the rogue. Wesley does not have much else. So with that, Wesley should be able to at least tear apart anywhere the archers aren't, which actually is quite a few places, as there's only about five or four archers. Three of them are in the back line right here. They're pretty much useless right now. So the bandits, they've got loads of room to maneuver. They can easily harass this entire western side. They can also help protect the front. They can stop these boys from doing all that much. Getting two metal extractors and a bunch of defense turrets for, what, two bandits? Totally worth it. Wesley is in a very strong position right now, especially since Orphelius has no way of really using all this build power, while Wes is in no danger of accessing for the next 30 metal. Like, they could get a massive battle, reclaim all of it, and still be fine. This is working out beautifully for Wes. The only downside for them, however, is that they don't have as much metal. Orphelius is a little more metal rich. They have all that storage. If they set up another caretaker, they're going to be able to pump out units really fast. Not to mention... Actually, the unit value is behind, so they would actually have to do that to keep up. But still, that is what they do. If they keep do that, they keep up. But otherwise, they are done. On the other hand, Thug Law Rogue coming in here, stopping the pickets from really managing to do all that much. That is going to be a massive threat to Orphelius' commander. That could be Orphelius' commander down, actually. The Stinger will be done to at least provide a bit of cover, but only stopping one Thug from having shields is not quite going to be enough, and that means... Well, that means it's going to be a dead Stinger. With no loss... No losses, really? No, the switch over and targeting to the commander. The Stinger needs to die. Like, now. The vol next volley... Now, stops the outlaw, and that means the slow is going to go away. That Stinger could have been dead if it was properly targeted, but I think Wes was a bit too concerned about keeping their units moving around, and it's like, no, that's not going to matter. Against the Stinger, it's not going to make a difference. They're going to hit regardless. So at this point, Orphelius... Now managing to push forward, having basically baited all of Wes's units into the south, put them in a position where they couldn't easily fight from, and properly set up defenses everywhere else to stop the bandits from really maneuvering. Wesley is going to be in a bit of a weaker position economically, as Orphelius has now set up what they need to build up. Well, not so much build up the caretaker. They haven't built that up. Their factory is still not producing units that fast, but they are producing a bunch of other defenses and other structures along the side of the map, which, at the same time, Wes still has the units to deal with and still harass. So ultimately... Wes is still doing okay. They're not doing as well as I thought they would, but they're still doing fine, and they still have a proper unit counter composition for dealing with these boys. So overall, this is going to be a strong situation for Wes to fight from. Not quite as strong as we saw before, if that had destroyed the Stinger and killed the Commander, but still strong. It's just a matter of getting rid of the Archers. That's the main thing. If the Rogues can hit the Archers and take care of them then then they're good. And the boys as well, like that's the big problem. The boys do stop the shields, and the shields do seem to at least stop some of the... Wow, you are lucky, Thug. They seem to at least stop some of the push. Not all of it, but some of it. But still, that was... That was a hell of a lucky Thug. Just went right over the gap and out the other side. And that... I mean, with that, that's so much damage dealt in the back line that Orphelius is forced to pull back. 
and not to mention the front line flank coming in as well. And West is a really strong position in terms of unit value. They're neck and neck, but it's unit types and positioning that's really making the difference. Oh, and also there's a commander death in the middle. That, that helps too. So ultimately, Wes does take it. And they did take it quite well. I mean, it was an even match. The unit value did ultimately go in their favor, but it was a relatively even match in terms of metal. It was just in terms of, you know, people dying and killing. Or Wes was a slightly bit more efficient with that and had slightly better unit counters and just generally had moves that made a bit more sense. And there's some chat in the Twitch chat pointing out that Grizzly would have been a really good idea. And I agree. I mean, Grizzly is usually a good idea for anything Amphid. If you're going Archer into it, or Boy into it, or Duck Boy Grizzly, it just... Grizzly is the end game for Amphid Factory. That's always been the case. I'm a bit surprised we didn't see any of those. That could have been... I mean, it's essentially a stinger on legs. But also, there was a lot of harassment in the back. Wes was constantly going around the backside and making it difficult for anything to happen, because the bandits and thugs later on went around the back, harassed a bunch, tore a bunch of metal up, really made it difficult for Aphelius to expand over to the southeast, and Aphelius got some northwest expansions, but overall, west didn't have to worry about defending their stuff. They didn't lose much. They just held the front line and gradually built up, especially near the end, where they managed to get a lot of stuff killed. So overall, west just was able to, to better kill their opponents, had units that could better deal with their opponents, and position them in a way that better dealt with their opponent's construction, better dealt with their opponent's macro, better dealt with their opponent's positioning of units. So anyway, that was that, and I I think that's a good place to, to end it. So that is going to be it for me today. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And as usual, we had a bunch of weird technical problems, but that is usual. And of course, next week, next week we have a tournament. Next week is going to be the 2v2 monthly tournament Hosted by Aquinum. And that... Wow, this stupid game. <sighs> I hope I never have to re cast replay off this engine ever again. Anyway. The... Yeah, so next week is going to be a tournament with a proper engine. Or one that doesn't have this weird bug. And... That is going to be probably for a few hours. So next week, tournament. Sign up. Should be a link in the forum. I can't check right now. So, go check that. And until then... Thanks for watching, and have a good night.